The Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Reaper Apparel Company. Reaper Apparel offers a casual line of superb fit, finish, and comfort. We design for those who refuse to die slowly and choose to live untamed. For those who aren't afraid to face the dark, for the ones that thrive in it, and for those who can appreciate life through a grim lens. That's Reaper Apparel Company. Go to the link in the description of this episode, use the promo code Mike Bono, and get 10% off. Also, the Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by my own personal merch store, the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. I have hats, I have t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, water bottles, notebooks, you name it, I've got it. The description and the link for that will be in the description of this episode. Also, right now, if you use the promo code WELCOME, I will give you 5% off of your first purchase. That's the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. Also, the Rod Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Tactical Brotherhood. All American Made Apparel, which helps support the Second Amendment. You can also find all this in the description of this episode with the link Tactical Brotherhood. Part of every proceed does go to helping veterans, as it is a very good cause. All American-made products made right here in Minnesota. Go and check them out. Use the promo code PATRIOT15 to get 15% off your purchase. Now, let's start the show. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Ride Home Rants podcast. This is, as always, your host, Mike Bono. I got a great guest for us today. He's coming to us all the way from Bradley University. He is a good friend of former guest and big fan of the show, Ryan Barth, and he is part of the basketball program at Bradley. And Patrick Altoff joins the show. Patrick, thanks for joining, buddy. Thanks for having me. Hey, so first and foremost, you know, uh, let everybody know what do you do uh, for the hoops program there at uh, uh, at Bradley. So as you were saying, I was, I'm the video coordinator here. Uh, just finished up my first year here. But basically, uh, simplest way to put it is just breaking down all the film. So after a game, going through all the film, um, four games, getting uh, ready for the opponent that we're playing. So whether that's scout reports, whether that's personnel, but video. That's the simplest way to put it is worrying about technology and making sure all the tech stuff is good. So you're the man behind the scenes that gets the team actually ready with the film and everything like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's what we could say. We could say that. Uh, so, you know, I don't know a lot about Bradley. I'll, I'll be honest. So, you know, what what can Bradley, you know, do for student athletes and just students in general? And, like, what kind of other things do they offer there? Yeah, so uh, we're a mid-major, uh, pretty small school, private school, around 5,000 students here. Uh, we are in the Missouri Valley Conference, but uh, I mean, just a uh, Central Illinois school. You can get a good education. Uh, men's basketball program. We just won the regular season title last year, nice. coming off a twenty-five and ten record. So, good basketball school. No football here, or anything like that. So, uh, kind of just focus on basketball here. Uh, very small school. So, if you don't know, if you're not from Central Illinois, you probably don't know what Bradley is. So. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I'm not going to lie here. I had no idea. <laughs> I knew yeah, it was no, in I, Illinois because of the Barths, but that's uh-huh. about it. <laughs> yeah, no, that it, that is no surprise, and there's uh, no uh, no anger towards you not knowing what it is. So Yeah, I mean, I can kind of relate. Um, I went to a smaller college uh, for swimming uh, back many moons ago now, Um but, you know, it was Bethany College, little small school in West Virginia. Not a lot of people really know of it. I mean, I think we had maybe a thousand students total. So very small Division three liberal arts college, you know, what I mean, but it it I'm glad I went there because I liked the smaller school atmosphere. Do you kind of is that kind of why Bradley was what it was for you? Yeah. So I grew up in Bloomington, Illinois, so central Illinois. So. Last year, I, or two years ago, I was down in uh, Texas uh, at a junior college, and prior to that, I was down in Florida as a graduate assistant. So the idea of getting back to Central Illinois, getting closer to family, 
I went to the University of Illinois in Champaign. So grew up a Midwestern kid, grew up an Illinois kid. So the idea of trying to get back to Illinois was something that I was very much trying to do. Yeah, I, I get it. I've uh, moved. I'm born and raised in West Virginia, and I moved to Ohio. And I know it's just like a state away, but I, I'm ready to get back to West Virginia as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what you grew up. You grew up trying to get away from home as much as possible. Then you get away, and now it's like, man, I kind of, kind of want to get closer to family and friends. So, no, I, I love being back in Central Illinois, being back in the Midwest. Yeah, it's um, yeah. You know, I I spent I don't know the entirety of my childhood. Oh, I'm getting out of this little small town. I can't wait to get out of West Virginia. Blah blah blah. I'm 34 now. I'm out of West Virginia, and I want to go back. And like that's just you know what I mean. You don't Absolutely. realize how much you're gonna miss something until you're not there anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What, what do they say? Something about like it. Uh, you don't realize how much you miss it until it's actually gone. Yeah. Something like that. So, yeah. That's, no, that's that's the absolute truth. That is definitely you know a hundred percent true. And it, it's it's weird though because my uh, my wife's from Ohio. That's why I live in Ohio. Um, but even her, when we go back to visit my family in West Virginia and stuff like that, she was like, can we just move back here and be in West Virginia? It's like, see, I tried to tell you when we got together that West Virginia was the better option. Like, <laughs> Is it really? See, I've never been to West Virginia, so I can't comment on it, but oh, man. I, only, I only know the things that you hear about West Virginia, so... So nothing good. Not, so nothing good. Yeah, say, not, usually that's not the most positive. Yeah, I would say, yeah, nothing good. Uh, I, funny story, I, I have people... That even from here, you know, being a comedian and when I travel and I tell them all, I'm, you know, I'm from West Virginia, they're like, there's no way you have all your teeth. And it's just <laughs> like, that's, you know, yeah, okay, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, two of them are fake, but okay, I get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah, but, you know, it's, uh, and, oh, that's great. and then they look at my wife and like, so what's, what's with you? It's like, not related. Come on, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's. <laughs> I get these stereotypes all the time, but no, West Virginia is a beautiful place to visit. Like I, I tell everyone, like you got to get to West Virginia if you've never been there. Like it's just, is it? It's 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 a wonderful place. I wouldn't, I would not suggest my hometown uh, if you've never been there. Uh, it's a very small town, twenty seven hundred people, but it's a big steel mill town. So it's got kind of a funk to it. If you, if you've never been to it, you can smell, you know, like the Coke plants and all that, you know, making the steel and everything like that. So it, it's funny now that, you know, I never used to realize that my hometown had like a, a funky smell to it until I moved away. And now mm-hmm. when I go back, I'm like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm home. Yeah. I always got that, that funk to it, you know, it, it but yeah. So I would stay away from Fallensby, West Virginia. Okay. <laughs> Just okay. To, let me let me write that down. Yeah, write that yeah. down. <laughs> so, uh, getting back to you, like, how did you get your start into coaching and doing all the video stuff like that? Um, and you were a student manager, correct? I was, yep. Uh, so, honestly, just uh, growing up, always loved basketball. My my dad works in sports. My brother works in sports. But I realized kind of freshman, sophomore year of high school that I wouldn't make money playing basketball. So I was too small at the time, and I knew I wouldn't play professionally. So I kind of decided to try to go the coaching route from there. So I played four years in high school and then could have played D3, um, but I just I wanted to go to a Division One school, learn from high major coaches, and then I thought that was my best path to trying to getting into the coaching realm. So went be- went to become a student manager at the University of Illinois, did four years there, and then uh, – was a graduate assistant at Jacksonville University and then uh, down in Texas at the junior college and then out here. So I've been working with video ever since college and honestly love what I do, but it's just the first stop right now. Like I'm still trying to elevate up. Okay. What's the, what's the plan? Where do we go from, you know, your video coordinator uh, position? What's the next step up for you? So uh, usually it's video coordinator, video coordinator, and then it's director of basketball operations, and then after that, usually assistant coach, and then assistant coach to a head coach. Okay. But you, there's a million different paths that you can take, but that's probably the simplest way to put it for people is video to director of operations to assistant to head coach. Okay. 
Um, so, I mean, you, you mentioned, you know, where, where you've coached, but this is one thing that, you know, it's been, I know you're from Illinois and this has been kind of weighing on my mind. How do you know Ryan Barth? You know, honestly, I, I figured you were going to ask me that. I don't have a great answer for you. So when I was a kid, we used to, I used to go to this basketball tournament and honestly, just, I, I was like the, the ball boy underneath the hoop when I was like eight years old. Then there was these parents from uh, Fieldcrest, where Ryan and Drew are both from. And I just started becoming friends with them, talking to them. And then just throughout the years, played them in uh, sports growing up. But there's not a good reason as to why I really know. But then, like, when I was a kid, I used to go to their house probably three or four times a summer. Like, I used to stay on their house or stay on their couch at their house all summer. Like, we used to play games. Like hanging out in Minunk, Illinois, and I don't know if you know anything about Minunk. Uh, there's nah. nothing there, nothing there. But like that's where I enjoyed spending my time. So, but there's no, there's no good reason. And honestly, I'd like to hear what Ryan would have to say as to how we really met. I'm, but there's I'm no good reason for it. Definitely gonna have to follow up with Ryan and see, yeah. you know, how how this connection happened. Uh, because you know, I I get it because I have you know people that are younger than me in in my life that, you know, that still text me to this day, you know, and we're, we're pretty good friends. And I, and I didn't even think about it. And then my wife was just like, how do you know them? Like, they're so much younger than you. How do you know them? And I actually had to think back like, Oh, that they're from when I was helping out with the Pee Wee football program in Fallensby. And I was one of the coaches and I coached them for a couple of years. And, you know, we just kind of, Went from there. I know their parents. They know my like, and it, I mean, again, again, it's a small town, so everybody kind of knows everybody. But to have a, a, a conversation where you can text, and you know, and I think they're in their like early twenties right now. Like they're they're not that much. Um, they're not as old as I am. We'll say that. Uh, <laughs> and she's like, how do you know 20 year olds? And she's like, ah, I had to think like, you know, but you yeah. make those connections. Do you have that uh, from other places where you've coached? You know, you said Jacksonville and in, and in Texas and all that. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm the young guy on most of the staffs. So like I'm the youngest guy on our staff here at Bradley by six years, I want to say. So uh, like no one's really my age group, but like, all our coaches are what 32 and then 40, like three, 44. So like I'm, I'm the young guy on staff and most times I've, I've been the young guy on staff. So like usually I'm the one hanging out with 32, 33 or older guys right now. You hit, you hit the age range. Well, you missed it by one though. 34 here. So we'll say it. Yeah. Um, I know problem with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's there's a reason I wear a hat everywhere I go. Cause the hair is just going away at there. I never thought it would hey. go this early. Clean beard though, clean beard. Oh though. yeah, yeah. It's podcast listeners won't be able to see it, but that's oh, a clean beard. Yeah, they'll they'll see it on the on the YouTube and the Patreon. Okay. And, you know, they'll get to see it. Yeah, they get to see that. Go. That's I say it all the time. People always are like, "Dude, man, beard's clean." I was like, "It it looks a lot better on video right now than it does." And like, I'm so lazy needing to clean it up, and like, it's just to the point where. It's just like you know, I, I I have a day job where I work for the Amish. They don't really care. Uh, yeah, I sell sheds for the Amish uh, oh, as, awesome. as a day job. So it's the one job to where like they don't care if I have a beard and it's mm-hmm. big and bushy, and mm-hmm. I love it. it you know, it's amazing because I've always been in sales jobs. Where, you know, got to be clean cut. You know, kind of got to keep it nice and trimmed every other day with me. And now, I mean, my boss was just at my uh, shop the other day and. I hadn't shaved in like a week and a half and he just didn't even just nothing. Didn't even say anything yeah. about it. Normally I'm like, all right, I'm going to get a talking to. I didn't know he was showing up today. Crap. And I, he was just like, nah, man, like how's everything going here? I'm like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> so <laughs> I, couldn't, I, should be. I, I couldn't pull off the goatee though. Like that, like ah, that. See, I, that's what, I can't get a beard. I just get a chin strap. So okay. that's why I, I don't get it to grow in on the cheek. So that's why I'm just going with the goatee look for now. Hey, we'll know, see a big old mustache for the summer. See, I, oh man, mustache! Like I've, I've, 
always joked around, because I always do No Shave November and all that fun stuff, but I keep telling my wife that I'm going to do Movember and just do the mustache for yeah, I like it. For I like it. November. She's like, that's a quick way to a divorce. That's not going to happen. Like, <laughs> okay, maybe not. I, I don't <laughs> suggest that. Thing. Yeah, but uh, she jokes. We, we kid around all the time. It, it, it's funny because my dad has the Fu Man, just, you know, the, the handlebar mustache, and he's bald. And my wife's always like, man, your your dad's kind of, your dad's a hunk. I see where you get your looks from. And I am a spitting image of him. But I tell her, you know, like, I, I guarantee you by the end of this year, I'm going to lose enough hair that I'm just going to shave it, say the hell with it. And I'll, I'm going to do the Fu Man. Like, Dad, she goes, you are not. You will look weird. I was like, I'm a spitting image of him. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> so that's you know, just I, I don't running. Suggest that if life's not for it, I'm I'm not for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, at least you, at least you're honest. Yeah, everybody yeah. else is like, do it, man. See what happens. I'm like, no, I don't want to go down that road. So. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm single, and I so I got nobody holding me back. So man, right. I can do whatever I want with the facial hair right now. Hey, man, you know it. it I, I used to I used to change it up all the time, and then I just it, it became a hassle for me. You know, as you get older, it's just like I'm sticking with this. This is it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt about that. So, uh, you know, ultimately, is the end goal for you getting back on track? I know I kind of got off on a little tangent there, and then we went into facial hair somehow. I don't know, uh, but uh, <laughs> but. Uh, is ultimately the end end goal for you is to be a head coach in basketball somewhere? Is that is that what you're you're looking to do? Yeah, as as of today, I would say absolutely. Um, there's good money in college basketball, and like I said, like I've always enjoyed working in basketball. Like the high major coaches are making three or four million dollars, so like that's obviously I'm far away from that right now. But like that's it's appealing to try to get to that level. So, but yeah, as of today, I would say this is definitely the path that I'm trying to go, and head coach would be the end goal. Yeah, I mean. You mentioned it, you know, obviously great money in it, you know, with everything that happened with Bob Huggins at, at WVU with, with his comments mm-hmm. and everything, you know, shouldn't have been said, you know, on, on, on television in, in, in an interview, blah, blah, blah. But when I saw like, oh, he's being fined a million dollars, like I didn't know what his salary was. I was like, how much are you making that you can mm-hmm. be docked a million dollars in salary and that's OK? Yeah, like, still be living. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be living just fine. I even told my wife that she's like, you know what? Good, uh, you're making that kind of money. Like, you know, I was like, honey, well, you did marry the comedian. There's not a lot of money in that at the start. You know what I mean? Like, we're still starting out here. So. Yeah, no doubt. But you're gonna make it one day. Oh, absolutely. Like people always ask me. I mean, I've been doing comedy for 11 years now, and you know, people always ask me, like, you know, why why do you do it? And it's kind of like you with basketball. It's what I love to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm very goal-oriented. I'm a very goal-driven person. And I have a goal of being a full-time professional stand-up comedian. And I won't stop until I hit a goal. I don't care if it takes me 40 years and I'm that old man like George Carlin on stage that you see on Netflix. That's That'll be me. The balding old guy on Netflix if that's what it takes. <laughs> There we go. Hey, if you're on Netflix, that means you got some money. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the end goal too. You know, to get yeah. to the money side of it. You know, <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, I don't need to be making like Kevin Hart money. He's worth like a billion no. dollars. But you know, like, just like, let's, let, let's live comfortably. You know what I mean? Like, right, that's, right. That's not and to... you're never you're never trying to chase the money. But at the end of the really? day, if you reach your goals, the money's going to come along with it. So absolutely, and, and I'm sure you can relate to this too as well. Like. um, I've always said, you know, if if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And 100%. people ask me all the time, like, how do you deal with the travel and being on the road and, you know, sometimes being away from your family and everything like that? And it's like, I love comedy. I, I, I love it. And, yeah, I'm sometimes driving three, four, five hours just to get to a show. And it's like – doesn't feel like I was in the car for five hours because I love the journey. I love getting to see other parts of the country and just making people laugh is definitely the best joy that you can have as a oh. comedian. Like that's, that's the payment for me right mm-hmm. now It's making a room full of strangers who sometimes don't know me from Adam laugh. Do you get kind of like a similar thing? You know, Hey, my game film helped 
with this right now with what you do? Do you do you is that kind of what your mindset is with the video? Oh, absolutely. Like uh like we we try to find what the other team is going to run, like certain plays that they run more than others. Then you try to you try to get the play called name. So like say they're running a a set that's called uh, I don't know, like uh Bradley 42 or something like that. So then when we hear Bradley 42 during the game, we know what set's coming, we can tell our guys and we're prepared for it. And that, those are the moments as a coach where you're like, I'm doing my job well because I helped prepare our guys for what the other team is going to run. So whether that's getting a turnover off of it, getting a stop, no matter what it is, just helping the team in any way possible, that's that's where I take my wins is if I can help with video that helps us in the game, I feel like I'm doing my job well. See, I I, I almost knew that was going to be the answer because I've talked to basically the entire Barth family. Uh, mm-hmm. We've gotten Kurt, Drew, and um, Ryan on here, and, you know, and – they all have that same mentality and I love that mentality in coaches and everything like that. But I also know what they're like as people. So you knowing Ryan Barth, I mean, I know you said there wasn't like that great of a reason as to how you know him, but I'm sure you have a fun Ryan Barth story that you can share on the the show. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here, man. I I don't even know with Ryan there. Every time I was with him, there was a fun story. Like, the, but the the biggest thing is they used to like I when I stayed at their house they used to like sleep talk to each other like a normal like a weird normal conversation while they're sleeping and have no idea that they were talking to each other like it would be like hey Ryan did you get the like Drew would be like hey Ryan did you get the yellow duck and then Ryan would respond and it'd be like what, are these dudes awake right now like what is going on but it, it's just that brotherly connection that they had that like. And they, and I know Ryan said it like they were ultra competitive. Yeah. Ultra competitive with anything we did. Like we would play basketball every day and play this game at night, kick the bucket where like it, it didn't matter what it was. It was a competition between those two. So like, I don't have anything like super funny with them, but like every time I was with them, it was just a good time and just, they're so much fun to be around. Yeah. I, yeah, I know the competitiveness full full fledged because when Ryan was going to finally come on, I mean, I've had him on on our round tables and stuff that we've done on this show, but I was fine. The first time they were on, I had them both on together and, you know, and then I had drew on by himself, then Kurt. And I was like, I got to get Ryan on one-on-one here and, and they'd sit down. I've, I've gotten everybody else on. So I have a group message with all of them in it. And, those two were even being like, hey, you know, my show is going to do better than your show. And, and like, and that's how competitive they are. It's like, guys, isn't yeah. that up to me? Like, this is my show. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that is the Barth family through and through, like ultra competitive. And that's why they're going to be successful. Obviously, they already are. But that's why they're going to continue to have success, because they are ultra competitive in anything they do in life. Yeah. And, you know, and they're just good people. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I love the Barth family. I like Absolutely. I you know getting to meet them, uh, Drew Ryan and Kurt. Like I am so happy that I have them as contacts now, and you know can bounce ideas off of Kurt because I've I've thought about dabbling into getting into coaching. I just don't have the schedule for it right now, unfortunately. But you know because I you know I, I played football growing up, I swam and all that, so I'm ultra competitive as it is. Mm-hmm. And, but I'm nowhere near the level to to say with like a podcast show is going to do better than their brothers. Like that's super competitive. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's all, that's almost too far. Like, all right, all right, guys, Let's that's maybe a, try to decide what we're competing over. You know what? We we could find out, but that's kind of up to me. I, I'm the one promoting yeah. the show too, so like <laughs> I can yeah, I can you, decide. You <laughs> You should just tell them different numbers. Tell them they both won. Yeah, it's a tie. It's literally dead yeah. even. Numbers are identical. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, that's funny. But yeah, you know, it's it's just great to have people that have that mindset. And I think sports, for me, you know, growing up playing sports, that's where you know my work ethic comes from, and like, do you see that with your players and and all that, like? outside of the basketball program? Do you get to see them, you know, in the classroom and stuff like that? Are they kind of the same way? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, with any college athlete, they're going to care about their sport 
more than academics a little bit, but like we, we have a really group, really good group of guys here. So we don't have to worry about them failing classes too often. Obviously there's going to be one here and there, but we, we have a good group. Like we, we finished with a, over a three Oh cumulative GPA for the year. So that's pretty good. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'd say our guys are, are competitive outside of basketball, but it, it really shows on the court. Once you get inside those lines, it's almost like you turn into a different person. But no, our, our guys great outside of the classroom, but I don't know if they have the competitive nature that the Barth family has. Yeah, I mean, I thought I was I thought I was competitive. I really did. Because like you said, uh, you know, once you got in between the lines, like when it was football, when I when I was in between the lines, you know, it was all business. And, you know, I knew I prepared myself enough to go out and perform. And with swimming, you know, once I either A, got up on the block or got in the water to start, like, it was it, it was game time. You know what I mean? And, like, but just talking with them, man, it was it was amazing to be like, wow, I am trash compared to them and competitive. Like, I have buddies that, you know, like, we, we would get together for, like, a poker night or just playing a game of Go Fish or something like that. And we'd be competitive in that. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but... It got to the point one time where we, like, me and one of my buddies had to look at each other like, all right, we need to dial it back because we were just in that mode. We had been playing a uh, board game. Like, it was just a, a fun night. We played some cards and that, and then all of a sudden, I grabbed the drink, and he was like, I bet you I could finish mine faster, you know? And, and it got to that level, and I was just like, I mean, man, you win. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I think we need to slow it down a little bit. Absolutely. <laughs> And I will say, I'm acting like I'm not ultra competitive, but if you ask any of my friends, they'll be like, Pat competes with anything he does, whether it's a video game, whether it's a game of cornhole bags, like, I I hate losing. So, yeah. like, it, it's not necessarily the competition of it, it's I can't stand losing. Like, yeah. I get I get seriously frustrated whenever I lose something. And that, and that's in anything. If I lose in a card game, I'm like, this card game is stupid. <laughs> like, Dumb. <laughs> yeah, like this is dumb. Like, why do I even play this? So, no, but I—that's what I'm. I'm acting like I'm not ultra competitive, but that's that's probably why me and the Barca are so close because we we did bond over our competitive nature. Okay. Well, I mean, I feel like we could sit here and, and talk for most of the day, but you know, we are running down near the end of the episode, and I do need to get this segment in because if I don't, the manager of the podcast, Johnny Fitty Falcone, will. Kill me, and it is the Fast Fitty Five. Five random questions from the wonderful manager of the podcast, Johnny Fitty Falcone. And Patrick, I mean, he sent these to me today. Like, he does this every time when he knows there's a recording. Like, he waits to, like, the last possible minute because he's just so random, and I think he's trying to make the comedian laugh with these questions. Uh, so okay. we're going to read these together. They're kind of rapid fire, but you can elaborate if you need to. So if you're all ready... Right, yeah, let's get it going. Let's get All it going. right, question number one. Who's cooler, Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers? Oh, I'm a Bears fan. Tom Brady, that one's easy for me. <laughs> so I do not like the Packers at all. Aaron Rodgers is a square. Tom Brady, obviously, he's uppity, but no. Yeah, Tom Brady on that one. Okay. Which is a better month, October or April? Ooh. I guess I'll just go with October because I got a brother with a birthday in October. I don't, I don't got any reason to say April, but I will say the weather is much better in April than it is October. Does, yeah, yeah, I would go more weather, but I get it. I mm-hmm. got to go with the birthday months. I get it. Okay. In case my brother's listening, <laughs> uh, which I, I'll make sure that he listens. So I'll say October. All right. Question number three is apple cider better warm or cold? Ooh, I'm not a big apple cider guy. You got me there. So, uh, Old, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I don't even, I, I, don't even think I could tell you if I've ever drank apple cider. So I don't. Yeah, that's that's not a go to for me. Yeah. Uh oh. Okay. He he. This one's fastball high and in. So be prepared for this one because this one can yeah. get deep. Who was a better NBA center, Shaq or Kareem Abdul Jabbar? Oh, see, I, I got to go with who I got to watch. So I, I would go with Shaq. I would say Shaq is probably the most dominant NBA player of all time. And I'm not saying he's the best player of all time. I'm definitely not saying that. That's Michael Jordan. But the most dominant player of all time is Shaq because teams had to literally get guys on their team who could just foul him. 
because he was too big, too strong, too physical. So teams had to change their roster for Shaq. So I'd say Shaq. Okay. Okay. You know, I, I got a little bit of the Kareem error, so you know, I've I've seen both of them, but yeah. I, yeah, and that's and that's not that's no no shade towards Kareem. Obviously, now second leading scorer in NBA history, so still an all time great. But I, I would just go with who I got to watch. After this last question, I have a thought on that, so keep that in mind. Uh, last question here: Are s'mores overrated or underrated? Mm, depends where you're at. Depends where you're at. If, if you're at a campfire, s'mores are great. But if you're if you're just hanging out eating s'mores, no, nah, that's that's lame. <laughs> okay. And that was the Fast Fitty Five. I I got to say though, for the last like couple of episodes, he's been hitting a lot of animal questions. So I'm surprised we didn't get an animal question hey, in there. I wish I got an animal question. Yeah, he's, I don't know what it is. He always has an animal question in there, and it's. It's when I get them and I finally get to like read them. It's just like, all right, where's the animal question? Where's the animal question? You know, <laughs> you, you got to find it because they'll sneak it in there sometimes. But, mm-hmm. but no, I, I got to say this too because you know when you talked about Kareem and being the second leading scorer and obviously LeBron, you know, breaking that record. But LeBron has also been playing for twenty plus years. So if you can't break like every record playing for that length of time, there's an issue because hey, and just the three point line. LeBron shoots yeah. threes. Kareem never shot threes. No. So that's that's why it's it's really hard to compare generations. That's why I don't like when people try to do the goat debate because no one's ever going to agree on it. Generations are different. The right. games are different. So my, my me and my nephews go back and forth on that goat debate. I, I like they 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 never got to watch Jordan, and like oh, dude, it's LeBron. I'm just like I will end your short life right now. Like <laughs> they, no, like all right, and I, like me and my sister and them, like we made them sit down and we put on the Jordan documentary, like mm-hmm. watch and learn. And they're like, nah, see LeBron's still better. I'm just like, I'm gonna uh, we're gonna fight, guys. We're gonna fight. So, wow. like like. Now you're just being a little shit. Excuse my language. Yeah, but now you're just you're, being like. <laughs> you're just doing too much now. Like, yeah. You're just trying to start a fight. Yeah. And then they're just, oh, I don't know what to tell you, Uncle Mike. Blah. I'm just, just get away from me. I, yeah. I need like an hour away from you. Just go somewhere. Just get, yeah, away get out of my me. face. <laughs> like, <laughs> and yeah, me and my sister, we were both just, even my sister, who, who's not that big of a sports fan, who was like, how do you not know it's Jordan? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty obvious, and I'm—I yeah. didn't grow up with Jordan. I, I missed it by just a little bit, but like going back and watching, and then just looking at when you're six and zero in the finals, like come on now. That—that's yeah. Everyone's like, well, that's your only uh, argument. It's like that's all you need. He's never lost in the finals, and he's never seen a game seven. Mm-hmm. Fight me, that's tell me I'm wrong. Part of sports is winning at the end, and that's what he did. Right. Oh. Again, we're, I'm going to have to shut this down because I, I will go for days on that topic. And we, uh-huh. <laughs> but, uh-huh. Patrick, you know, thank you for coming on. I do give every guest this opportunity at the end of every episode. So if there's anything that you want to get out there, whether it's a good message or, you know, uh, wanting to get recruits to Bradley, anything like that, I'm going to give you about a minute. The floor is yours. And I, I really don't got too much to say besides just thank you for having me, obviously, Appreciate Ryan for putting me onto this podcast. I've enjoyed listening to it. I plan on listening from here on out because you're you're a good dude. You uh, you're funny. I listen to uh, I forget which show I listen to, but I listen to one of your stand up shows. So you're a very funny guy, and I'm I'm very glad that I had the opportunity to talk to you today. Hey man, I, I really do appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, uh, that's that's reassuring coming from you know somebody who doesn't you know. We, we just met really literally today. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and you know, I can tell you, and I'll tell you this, like I tell every other guest that comes on this show, I will now be following Bradley basketball. Uh, Love it. And it annoys the hell out of my wife because I've had so many people on here from so many different schools and programs and everything like that. 
that I follow now. So my phone is constantly dinging with updates that I found and was able to put on there for him. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, Bradley has now made the list. So I will be following you guys. So I'm going to be looking for big things from Bradley this up, up and coming season in basketball. So be on the lookout for that. And that is going to do it for this week's episode of the Ride Home Rants podcast. Again, I want to thank Patrick Altoff for joining uh, the show. It was a lot of fun to talk to you. And everyone, please be sure to check out all of the sponsors that you heard at the beginning of the episode. That is Tactical Brotherhood, Reaper Apparel, and my own personal merch store, the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. Also, we got two new sponsors that I do need to get out there, and that is Dubby Energy, energy drinks for gamers, podcasters, streamers alike. No jitters, no crash. This has actually replaced my morning coffee and monster that I had to drink in the morning to get myself going, as I'm a very busy man, uh, and it is phenomenal stuff. Also, what I am super pumped about just that just joined us, and that is Shankit Golf. Golf apparel for the everyday man that wants to go out and have a good time on the golf course and look good while doing it. They have hats, uh, golf polos. They have a bunch of stuff. My stuff just came in from Shankit Golf, and I got to tell you, I love all of the apparel that I got. A lot of funny stuff on there, too like the golf towel that they sent me that says, I use this towel to clean my balls. And, you know, it's stuff like that that makes me want and glad to join a great company like them and support them. For both of those, use the promo code Mike Bono and it will get you 10% off of your purchase. That's going to do it for me. As always, if you enjoyed the show, be a friend, tell a friend. If you didn't, tell them anyways. They might like it just because you didn't. That's going to do it for me, and I will see y'all next week. The Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Dubby Energy. Energy drinks made for gamers, streamers, and podcasters alike. For gamers, streamers, and podcasters alike. Go to the link in the description where you can find the best energy drinks out there. Less caffeine than a cup of coffee. Also... No jitters and no crash afterwards. Use the promo code Mike Bono and get yourself 10% off. Also, the Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by my favorite sponsor of the show, and that is Shankit Golf. Golf apparel made for the everyday golfer. We might not go out and shoot a six under par. We're probably going to shoot a six over par, but... This is going to give us the gear that's going to help us rock it on and off of the course. Go to the link in the bio. Use the promo code Mike Bono and get yourself 10% off there as well.